Before I mount my silver, what I'm going to do is heat up my crucible, make sure it's nice and hot, and I'm glazing the inside with some borax. Be sure to heat up your skillet so it's warm before you pour the metal inside it. And make sure you put some oil in there as well. So I'm framing my silver scrap, ready to melt. And of course, when you're melting, you want to add some more borax. We want to make sure that the silver is melted a lot, that it's liquefied, it's swirling around the pot before we pour. Make sure you get every last drop out, keep your pot nice and clean and then wait for the silver to cool. When putting our silver through the mills, we want to take our time, do this very slowly. We don't want our metal to crack. I'm only taking it down a quarter of a turn each time. Keep an eye and take a close look at the corners of your metal Make sure there's no cracks. And make sure you keep your metal nice and soft by reheating it. Just trying to create a thin tip at the end by using the ends of the mills. This can also be filed down into a point. Now that same square rod I'm going to run for a round draw plate to bring it down in diameter. a small piece of emery paper just fold it around the metal and give it a clean and it smoothens it out just going to put the end of the wire that I've bent inside the chuck of the drill just to hold it in place I'm going to soften the metal again because what I want to do is I want to create my round links into oval links. put a smaller rod inside my coil and what I'm going to attempt to do is to squash them on the sides to make it oval.
using the line that I made previously with the black marker. I'm going to cut along that line to release my links. Now I realised that not all my links were oval, some of them were still round. So I'm going to reheat them and try to make them oval. And I could only do that by doing each one at a time. I separated my links. I had about half open and half closed. I'm just cleaning away some of the solder to create a freer movement. So I go from putting three links together, then adding them three links to each other, so I've got seven links, and I just continue until all links are put together. I heat it up and put it into the acid or pickle. chain I made is short so I had to add more links Once again I soften my metal by heating it up and this is where it gets very technical. This is one of the most important parts of making this chain. Uh, it was very time consuming. I want to bend the links gently without breaking the links. I did have some links break 
So what you want to do is make sure you clean each side of the solder joint. Make sure it's clean before putting it back together. Now the most important part of this project is to keep this chain straight and flat. Obviously I didn't have that in the beginning so I had to go back and re-straighten the links. This is what's going to separate your chain from a good quality chain from a very poor one. I've got my chain on a piece of wood hold down with some shellac to keep it nice and flat ready for filing. I'll start off just filing it flat and then I'll break the edges slowly to get a nice curve. I'm going to soak it in some nail varnish remover to remove the shellac. Also I have another container on the outside with hot water. Of course I'll repeat the process again to do the other side. This is how much I filed off. Now put it inside a pin barrel to give it a nice clean. Go over the sides of my links because they were a bit rough so I just wanted to smoothen them out. Here comes the fun part to brighten up our finished product. I'll start off by just using a penny brush with some grease compound. Now 
Now you can see scratches on this right hand side. Now as I move to the left, it's a lot smoother. Then a grease mop is used to smoothen it out. And lastly, I'll be using rouge to give it that mirror finish. All I have to do now is give it a wash in the ultrasonic. And dry off. And here's our finished product. Thank you for watching.